prodigious helpings of derision at companies like Capcom and Electronic Arts due to what amounts to a profligate game of DLC two-card Monty. What I've only tertiarily addressed is the subject of downloadable video games on PSN and Xbox Live. It's a subject that courts analysis, and while everyone else is blowing their activist load over SOPA, legislation the government lacked the fiduciary resources to even fucking enforce to begin with, I've elected rather to confront a topic that is... It's already adversely affecting many of my fellow Rageaholics, even as I record this vlog tonight. Foremost, I want to dispel the myth that games on Xbox Live and PSN, which you purchased, in fact belong to you. Without boring you to death with legalese, rest assured, the language in the Xbox Live and PSN terms of service, which now easily outstrips an Ingve Malmsteen guitar solo for sheer length and self-indulgence, absolves you of any actual ownership of these games. And in turn, it absolves Microsoft and Sony of any culpability when an internet outage renders these video games half-functional at best and outright unplayable at worst. Let me tell you a little story. I alluded in my 2011 gaming resolutions video to the fact that Sega games in particular are sold to consumers on Xbox Live under the proviso that they are tied not to your hard drive, but to your console. And as we all know, Xbox 360s have a habit of failing harder than George Lopez tonight, which presents an obvious quandary, and which is also why a couple years back when I replaced my recently deceased Xbox 360 with a shiny new one and tried to boot up games I'd already purchased, Xbox Live informed me that despite the fact they showed I'd purchased the game, I was only permitted to play the trial version. The fecal blizzard didn't really start to swirl until I gave Microsoft tech support over an India call, and a gentleman with a thick accent who wanted me to believe his name was Charlie informed me that the best course of action was to purchase the game with a second account made for the express purpose of purchasing said game. Even though I already own it, but purchasing it a second time so that it would then be playable on my main account. As furious and anal pounding as that was, unbeknownst to me, Microsoft was merely rearing back their throbbing money cock so they could better aim for my large intestine. Because in 2011's Fall Xbox Live update, they added a new stricture that went unpublicized on major gaming websites, drowned in the veritable frothing streams of fanboyism due to the fact that Daily Motion, YouTube, and Hulu Plus were added. That stricture is as follows. Whereas previously, if one purchased an Xbox Live Arcade game on one account, it was then available to all accounts on said Xbox, now an Xbox Live Arcade game, once purchased, is only playable by the singular account that purchased it. So now, I'm fucked in every hole. I can't buy Streets of Rage 2 again, because every time I try, it tells me I already purchased it. And if I buy it on another account, it will only be playable on that fucking account. So my message to you this evening is very simple. And unlike SOPA, it stands at a distinct risk of fucking you in the ass in the near future. Games you purchase online are not yours. That goes for Steam, that goes for Amazon, that goes for video on demand services, it goes for Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, you fucking name it. And the delusion that physical media is a thing of the past is not progressive or forward thinking like GameFailers.com wants you to believe. It's a painstakingly constructed deceit to compel us all to embrace cloud technology and in the process render further consumer rights to faceless monolithic corporate entities. All ideological b battles, they begin first and foremost with language. That's why political groups who embrace an ideology that's as old as the hills, and certainly as old and tired as their esteemed colleagues across the aisle, choose to call their ideology progressive, despite the fact that their political ideas have been tried in civilizations that are now centuries old. How does this relate to the topic at hand? The cloud is no more a new concept than, than Big Brother, quite frankly, is. And the big lie in this case is that embracing it is an inevitability. You're not regressive if you prefer to have your games, music, and films on physical media. You're just perceptive. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed.